caribou have been a part of the Canadian story for thousands and thousands of years. Perhaps what people aren't aware of is how unique the caribou are in British Columbia. They're not what a lot of people have in mind when they envision caribou, you know, these massive herds of hundreds of thousands of caribou migrating across the tundra. They live in pretty remote, isolated areas, often high up on mountain tops. Based on our discussions with Indigenous governments about their historical population size, we do know that they were much more plentiful previously. We started to see populations really start to decline in the late 1990s, uh, in the early 2000s. Working with Indigenous governments and the interest groups, because of that work and those collaborations, we do have more caribou now than we did five years ago. As ecosystems change and adapt, then there are some species that are able to adapt quickly and others that aren't, and caribou are one of those species. Caribou around the world are impacted by um, the way people use the landscape. One of the known issues that we have with a lot of caribou is that um, there's been altered predator-prey dynamics due to changing landscapes. They need to be able to spread out on the land base to avoid predators, and they're in a current situation where that land base is shrinking. Their adaptive strategy of living in these isolated areas without many predators ha has changed. So, for example, wolves using rows to get up into alpine habitat where they typically would not be located before. So now they are living in a system where they are encountering wolves at a much higher rate than they would have. The goal of the Caribou Recovery Program is to maintain caribou in BC in populations that become self-sustaining over time so that we're not relying on things like predator management and that we can point to our partners and say that we did this together. The BC Caribou Recovery Program has been a leader on the world stage when it comes to putting the structure and the efforts required to recover caribou across a wide range of different types of ecosystems. We implement these emergency short-term population recovery actions in order to reverse those trends, get those caribou increasing in population size while we address some other longer-term solutions, which is usually around habitat protection, habitat recovery. We know that trying to reduce the amount of disturbance on the landscape has an influence on people's jobs, their livelihoods, and also their territories and their homes. The challenge now is, I think, addressing habitat loss and, and maintaining caribou habitat in places where there's smaller communities that have been really reliant on the forest industry for a long time, or at least access to natural resource. You know, we see the opportunity to support those communities in transitioning to different ways of living on the land, working with Indigenous governments to support that as well. We've had the most success in those areas where we've established strong partnerships with Indigenous governments. The long-term game is to have a collaboratively managed landscape and that is in partnership with Indigenous governments because ultimately what we're doing for caribou supports a lot of other things like broader ecosystem health and the ability for Indigenous nations to be able to effectively practice their, their rights and title. That's really the key moving forward, continuing to work really collaboratively with Indigenous governments and interested groups. This is a solution that needs to be built collaboratively. We need to be able to work together to get to a place where we can achieve recovery for caribou. If you take a quarter out of your pocket, you'll see the caribou is on the, the Canadian quarter. I mean, that goes to show that this is a, a species that's really important. And they are an indicator of overall ecosystem health.
They're sort of what we would call an umbrella species, where by recovering caribou, you're helping a lot of other species as well that depend on similar habitat types. There's all kinds of benefits that will flow from maintaining caribou on the landscape. Protecting caribou is also going to protect a lot of other species as well by preserving those mature tracts of forest. That will benefit ecosystem health in general. When we have healthy caribou populations, we know that we're doing things right. Generations in the future, my grandkids' grandkids will know caribou and they'll know that there was a decision made in 2017 that we were going to keep caribou on the landscape and that we successfully did that in partnership with communities, indigenous leaders, indigenous governments. It's a very broad-based collective approach. By conserving caribou, you're not only conserving caribou, you're also saying we value conservation, we value protecting habitat. And it's kind of like planting a seed or laying a framework for how we want to move forward as a province.